Good morning, good morning, good morning. Jesus, good morning. Jesus, Jesus. Praise God. Yes. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Happy first yeah. of the month, the first of October. Praise God. We are in a new month. Praising God for newness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. New mercies. New grace. Uh, good morning, everyone. Say good morning, Mama. Good morning, Mama. Good morning, Rev. Good morning, Sister Diane. Sister Leslie. Uh, Deacon S. Yvonne, good morning. Hey, this. Uh, and hey there on the news. I am co presiding with Eden, as you can see this morning. She woke up early and she ha she is a ball of energy, as always. Praise God. Praise right. God. God. Uh, hallelujah. As we begin this morning's service, uh, first let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for. Uh, giving us the opportunity to open up our eyes on this morning, Lord, into fellowship and to praise your name. Hallelujah. We ask that you bless those that are united in this circle, Lord, those that are soon to come, Heavenly Father, and for those uh, in our circle that uh, are not able to connect with us, Lord, meet them where they are, Heavenly Father. Touch them, Heavenly Father. Bless them. Uh, keep them covered, Heavenly Father, with the Holy Spirit and the blood of Christ, Heavenly Father. Uh, we ask that you make this experience, uh, that we make the best of this experience, Heavenly Father, and then you take it to a whole nother level, Lord, as you do always. Heavenly Father, be with us, be near us, be on, uh, and carry us, Lord. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Hello, Sister, Clara, uh, Sister uh, Ciara, as you come in, um, as we begin morning service, uh, let us play My Faith Looks Up to Thee. Our morning hymn. <laughs> Oh. Um. 
Amen. Amen. My faith looks up to a ransom soul, a ransom soul. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, at this time, we shall have uh, our scripture reading by Deaconess Yvonne Fleming. And following that, we shall have dynamic prayer by Sister Diane Wheeler Shepherd in that order. Praise God. Amen. 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 Good morning, everyone. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto each and every one of us this morning. Our scripture is coming from Mark chapter 11. We will read from verse 22 through verse 26. Mark chapter 11, verse 22 through 26. And it reads, And Jesus answering say unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he asked, which he saith, shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. And when you stand praying, Forgive if you have ought against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. The word of the Lord is already blessed. Glory be to God. Amen. 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 Amen again. Always good to hear the word of God. Good morning to everyone. Good morning. This morning, I am a little camera shy here. Um, but nonetheless, I am always ready to give God the glory. Amen. Give him the honor. Give him the praise. So pray with me, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Mm. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord. You are my strength. O oh God, you are my redeemer. Oh, Father God, here, now, is where two or three are gathered in your name. Father God, we come, we come, oh God, to give you glory. We come, oh God, to give you Thanks. We come, O oh God, acknowledging that you are great. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies we see. For all that we have, Lord God, we know that your hand have provided. So great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto us. Father God, you watched over us last night as we slept and slumbered, not knowing, Lord God, whether we are between here and there. Yeah. But Father God, you watched over us last night. Oh God, you dispensed your angels around our bedsides. Mm -hmm. Father God, you protected us from hurt, harm, and danger, seen and unseen. Amen. So Father, we thank you this morning. Thank you. We thank you, oh God, because we know, we know, oh God, that you are God all by your 
So a faithful God. Father God, we thank you for this beautiful morning. Mm -hmm. Lord God, we realize that today is the day that you have made. And yes, oh God, we are rejoicing and we are glad in it. Yes, Lord, yes, Father Lord. God, it is your will that we are here today. Yes. So Lord God, we say thank you. Thank you. Father God, we ask that you come into this service. The service, oh God, where we can lift up your name and we can worship you in spirit and in truth. Yes, Lord. So, Lord God, as we thank you for your loving kindness, your grace, your peace, your protection, your mercies, oh God, mm -hmm. we want to worship you, oh God, in the beauty of holiness. We want to worship you, oh God, in spirit and in truth. Mm -hmm. So, Father God, we ask that you continue to bless us, continue to bless our families, continue to bless the world, continue yes. to bless yes. our church, oh God, the yes. Reverend Family Worship Center of Brooklyn, New York, under the leadership of the Reverend Calvin H. Handler. Father God, you know all about us. We know that we're on your map. So Lord God, we ask right now in the name of Jesus that you continue to partner with us as we carry on our service, oh God, let us do it all for your glory, oh Father God. Lord God, we ask that you continue to strengthen us on our faith journey, oh God, so that we can continue to fight the good fight, oh God. Father God, we ask, oh God, that you continue to strengthen us. We ask, oh God, that you touch those that are sick, those that are bereaved, those that are wayward. Lord God, we know you know all about them. Father, we ask that you continue to have mercy upon them. Continue to give them the healing that they need, that they stand in need of, oh God. Oh God, we know that you can do all things but fail. This is why we come to you each and every day, oh God. We come to you, oh God, always seeking your knowledge, wisdom, your understanding, oh God. Having hope for today, hope for tomorrow, and hope for the days to come, oh Father God. Oh God, we thank you this morning, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for all that you have done, all that you will continue to do, oh God. Oh God, we thank you even when we go through those trials and tribulations, the tests that we go through, oh God. Even as we go through those insurmountable times, Lord God, we continue to hold on to your unchanging hand. Always believing, Lord God, that you are the answer to life situations. So, Father, we ask that you continue to hold each and every one of us in the palm of your hand. Father God, we ask that you bless this service, bless this service in the way that you would bless it. Oh God, give us all the keen understanding of your word, oh God, for we know that your word, your word from on high is what we need to hear so that we can continue to grow, continue to glow, and continue to be a blessing to someone, oh God, as you are a blessing to us, Father God. Lord God, we thank you for this platform where we can carry on and we can worship you. We thank you, oh God, for all that have joined with us today, oh God. And we ask, O oh God, that you continue to strengthen each and every one of our hearts, O oh God. Continue to give us the desires of our heart, if it should be your will, O oh God. Lord God, allow us to continue to move in this day, O oh God, keeping us from hurt, harm, and danger, O oh God. We don't know what's before us, O oh God, but one thing that we know is we will walk with you, O oh God. We will walk with you. We will hold your hand. We will continue to lift up your name. We will continue to, to give you thanks, Lord God. So Father God, we ask 
that you continue to bless us in the way that you do. Oh God, we ask that you have mercy upon each and every one that stand in need of a blessing, oh God. You know all about them. So Father God, we say thank you. We say thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. And oh God, in the name of Jesus, I pray. My brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. And thank God for a new opportunity to pray and praise your name. Amen. 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 We thank you, Sister Yvonne, for that mountain moving scripture. Praise God. Move mountain, move. Mm -hmm. Move mountain, move. Mm -hmm. And we thank you uh, for the dynamic prayer, as always, Sister Diane, getting us, lifting us into the worship. Yes. Worshiping God for just how good he has been. Praise God. Yes. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to your name, oh God. Mighty, hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Um, we do have a, a prayer request, uh, Brother Eddie Leon, uh, given to us uh, by uh, Sister Valerie, who is the godmother of one of our uh, baptism uh, candidates from a few weeks ago, uh, Anaya Lee. And so the family asking that we pray for Eddie as he fights and fights and we are uh we are claiming life and life more abundantly for brother eddie praise god uh and the perfect result according to god's will praise god uh, as we move on uh to our welcome uh send my uh, co-presider oh, <laughs> praise god so welcome people so you say Welcome to the, yeah, it's me. Welcome. Welcome. Eden, that's right. Now, welcome to the Remnant Family Worship. Thank you, Fancy Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Please come again. God bless you. God bless you. Love you. Amen. That's the beautiful princess. Yes, yeah. raise them up in the knowledge we of God. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. uh, Amen. Whether you're on YouTube or Facebook watching us live. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, Amen. Next, we have a selection uh, from our music ministry uh, as we begin to set that atmosphere once again for the word of God. Amen. Makes no difference what you're going through. You're gonna make it. God's gonna see you through. Hold your head up. Put a smile on your face. This is another test.
God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. Everybody. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. You say God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. Come on. Everybody say God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. Come on, Jay. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. With your name. Praise God. God's got a blessing with my name on it, with your name on it. Hallelujah. It is a blessing to be had. Hallelujah. 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 Uh, what a way to transition into the ways uh, that if God has blessed you, that you can be a blessing to the Remnant Family Worship Center. Um, we worship through giving and God loves a cheerful giver. Hallelujah. Um, we have Cash App and we have Givelify, well, both very transparent ways of you giving um, you get your statements back and uh, you can see the manifestation of your giving uh, through the Remnant Family Worship Center um, when you see what we do in the kingdom and in the community. Um, it goes to uh, helping us to provide uh, books and food um, and clothes uh, for families and for schools. Um, we are working on a, uh, adopting and working with a shelter uh, for the Christmas season, um, and we are starting now. Hallelujah. So when you bless, the re when the Remnant uh, Family worship, uh, worship Center blesses you, uh, and then you bless the Remnant Family Worship Center, hallelujah, not only are you uh, blessing and edifying the Lord and building up the kingdom, but there is a very practical very practical way that you are also uh, helping the community and God's children. Praise God. So the cash app is the uh, dollar sign remnant family WC and then the givelify uh, as my uh, as my other presiders have uh, shared. Uh, please take a picture because there are you know you see the dots and the slashes HTTPS semicolon slash slash GIB dot LI slash HCW FOB uh, you enter those in and you will be able to give through Givelify, praise God. And then at the end of the year, you can use that as a statement um, just uh, for your giving, praise God. God bless you uh, in advance for whatever you are able to give or not. God love, God bless you. Amen, amen. And the announcements for the week, please continue to follow us on social media, uh, share us. Uh, so follow us and share us so that uh, those that may uh, be looking for a church home can find one. Praise God. Those that need to hear a word uh, can find, can hear one. Praise God. If you need, uh, if you have any questions, please reach out, call or text 646-287-8972. You can also email the remnant fwc at gmail.com praise god our social media handles and tags are uh, facebook.com slash the remnant fwc uh, on youtube it is uh at the remnant uh wc uh the remnant fwc um, on instagram the same the remnant fwc very consistent across the social media uh platforms uh continue praise god good morning sister esther uh, as you come on in um, to meet us in our virtual sanctuary. The meeting ID on Zoom is 717-1499-8095. Uh, 
uh, and uh, have our Sunday morning worship experience with us every more every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Praise God. Monday through Friday at the 7.30 hour, please join us for our morning manna. Uh, you can call in. The number is 339-209-4712 uh, for a half hour at most. Praise God. Prayer, a, uh, a message, and song. Praise God. It is beautiful and dynamic, a great way to start off your day. Uh, Tuesday nights, we have Bible study and prayer in our virtual sanctuary right here uh, through, that, Google, through that, uh, that Zoom line or on Facebook and, uh, and, and YouTube, praise God, live. On Wednesdays at the noon hour, please join us for our midday recharge for prayer, uh, five, 10 minutes tops. Uh, that number is the same uh, number that we use in the morning, 339-209-4712. Uh, and uh, just continue to stay engaged and locked in. Send a text, send an email, send a message, a DM if you need anything. Please, please uh, praise God. And, con and continue to check in on each other. Praise God. Our strength is our community. Our strength is our connections. Uh, from past the C's desk, a reminder. What's coming is better than what's been. Don't get comfortable for your better days are coming. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Congratulations on surviving the worst season of your life. Now live. Praise God. And as always, be blessed, be encouraged, and expect greater because God has greater in store for you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. We will now have uh, our pastoral remarks and then we'll set the atmosphere with a sermonic selection by our music, uh, music ministry. And then the next voice you will hear will be that of our leader, the Reverend Calvin Anthony Chandler, senior pastor of the Remnant Family Worship Center. Praise God. Grace, mercy, and peace be multiplied to each and every one of you from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. It is another day's journey, and we are so glad about it. God has saw fit to allow our golden moments to roll on just a little while longer. Amen. We're yet here in the land of the living, or the land of the dying, trying to get to the land of the living, because we shall all live again if we live mm -hmm. right. The Bible lets us know that heaven belongs to us. Amen. We opened this morning saying, oh, how precious is that name, that the more I call it, the better I feel. Then we heard, my faith look up to thee. We have to have faith, and it must be looking to Calvary. Then we hear God got a blessing with my name on it. That's the three selections, our sermon within itself, uh, that God has a blessing with your name, no matter what you're going through. No matter what you are facing, amen, God has a blessing with your name on it, that he, he gives us so much power and strength that we can say, mountain, get out of my way, amen. But the prerequisite to having that faith and that power is if you got something wrong inside of you, you have to go repent and ask for forgiveness, amen. That's in the Bible, Mark chapter number 11. We are so excited to be in worship on this morning. Amen. We are tired and body. And two little twins wore me out. They ran and I was their bouncy house. They jumped no matter how bad. I told them my foot hurt. After they examined me, they just jumped and played and tired me. I went to sleep. I woke up and they still run around playing. Amen. We thank God <clears throat> for my twins, grace and mercy. Amen. We're praying for Sister Ada. We got word that she's in has moved to the rehab, amen. Uh, my sister texted on this morning, pray for her. She had blood clots. We were praying that the same God that has healed us will go all the way back to PA and heal her, amen. We're praying for Sister Alexis as she's in transitioning, as she is transition, moving is hard, amen. We're praying for her strength. It's good to see she actually on this morning. Amen. We thank God for her dedication yeah. down the years. She has served us 
not just as Pastor Chandler, Reverend Chandler, but as Mr. Chandler, we worked together. She was always very dedicated. Amen. I was able to speak to the family of Ludaquan and Mina. Amen. The one we pray for every uh, morning uh, that had leukemia at my school. Uh, they are now home. Amen. They're being homeschooled. Spoke to the teacher on last week. Uh, uh, he's in first grade now. We thank God for them that came up to the school on last week. <clears throat> we are just so happy that he put uh, so what God is doing. And we know there's still power in prayer. Amen. This is why we stand firm on prayer. And we gather every morning to pray because prayer changes things. Amen. 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 Good to see Sister Esther. How are you? Amen. Amen. All right, she's on mute, but her mouth is moving. She said, all right, she's good. <laughs> Amen. 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 There is a word I want to talk briefly, just simple thought, a pit stop. Pit stop coming from the book of beginnings. Amen. Chapter number 37. So after we have heard the selection, we're going to come back and talk about just have a pit stop. Amen. I thank God. Mm -hmm. Lord, hide me in thy glory in the secret place of your holiness and grace. In thy presence, I bless your name and give you reverence. Hide me where the hands of mercy covers me from the enemy. circumstance hide me when I want to take one more chance I need you to hide me when my strength is weak hide me when my eyes want to take one more glance Lord, hide me in thy glory, in the secret place of your holiness and grace. That's where I worship in thy presence. I'll bless your name. I need you to hide me where the hands of mercy may cover me from the enemy. I need you to hide me, hide me from circumstances. 
circumstance hide me when I want to take one more chance I want you to hide me When my eyes want to take one more glance Oh, hide me Oh, my God I need you to hide me I'm asking you to hide me From the enemy I need you to hide me, oh my. I need you to hide me. Oh, hide me, Jesus. Even if, oh my, the enemy you hide in me. Sometimes you gotta me from myself even if oh, shall I? <laughs> the enemy you hide in me yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. even if the enemy Maybe you don't know. Oh, so this our strength. Uh, so you are uh, but hide us. Uh, like that Elvis Pro called you know, Lord hide us. When we want to take one more chance. Lord hide us and keep us in the safety of your pavilion. This is our plea and our supplication. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Greetings to our Facebook family. Amen. Auntie, I see you. Yeah, give me a minute, okay. Oh, yeah. Where's mommy? He's up. Lord, hide us. We all need to piss out the book of beginnings, Genesis chapter number 37. Genesis 37, verse number 18. Genesis 37, verse 18, it reads, On this wise, they saw him from afar, and before he came near to them, they conspired against him to kill him. They said to one another, Here comes the dreamer. Come now, let us kill him and throw him into one of the pits. Then we'll say a fierce animal devoured him, and we will see what will become of his dreams. But when Reuben heard it, he rescued him out of their hands, saying, Let us not take his life. And Reuben said to them, Shed no blood, cast him into the pit here in the wilderness, but do not lay a hand on him, that he might rescue him out of their hand to rescue him to restore him to his father. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe and uh, the robe of many colors that he wore. Verse 24, and they took him and cast him into the pit and the pit was empty. There was no water in it. The word of God for people of God Someone say glory be to God. Glory be to God. <clears throat> Amen. A pit stop. And we see here in our text, there is a teenager by the name of Joseph. He was the son of Jacob. He is one of his 11 sons. 
As we exegete this pericope, we see that Joseph is being thrown into a pit, not by a stranger, but he was kidnapped by people he know. Mm -hmm. No, he wasn't in the wrong place at the wrong time, nor was he guilty of anything, but he still found himself being thrown into a pit. It wasn't a pagan family, nor was it another nation of idol worshipers, but he is being cast into this pit by his own brothers. Can I pause right here for the first time in this conversation to tell you that uh, some of your worst enemies are not strangers, but they live in the house with you. They, they have the same blood running through their veins, and you have the same last name. Every one of your enemies is not always someone else, but it's someone in your family. And I was talking with Alexis as we drove the other day and said, uh, sometimes your greatest enemy is yourself. This is why the songwriter said, Lord, you have to hide me, even if the enemy you hide me from is me. Some people simply hate you because they feel like you got what they should have. Uh-huh. Or uh, what they failed to realize is that, uh, and don't understand is, you didn't ask for it. God gave it to you. Uh -huh. If truth be told, I've always said I've never wanted to pastor. Is that I know I will mind serving Dr. Whitney. and But you're jealous at me now that I pastor a ministry, but I didn't ask for this. This is something God gave me. I had no choice but to accept the assignment. So we find ourselves being hated on and plotted against. The Bible says they will conspire against him for something that he didn't even ask for. And if truth be told, he's classified as a dreamer, but I believe it was in the Bible only quoted uh, 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 two dreams he, he had. He, he, he had two dreams and I believe he interpreted two dreams, but they called him a uh, 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 dreamer. Be careful how you let people label you. You you know, oh, you go to that uh, uh, little remnant family worship center, that, that little ministry, you you got that little business you're working on, and you, you got that little job. They will try to devalue what God has given you because they're really jealous of what you have. That was under my notes. Let me get back. Uh huh. Uh, 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 the Bible says, uh, if you read the, the whole story, that, that Joseph's father gave him a coat. The Bible declares and describes the coat that it was a coat of many colors. If you were to study and examine uh, the coat, you will find it was like the long trench coat we wear. Uh, uh, the church, it has long sleeves. The reason why the type of coat is important because the type of coat you wore in those days represent the authority you have. Uh -huh. We all been to hospitals. I was there the other night and you will notice that the doctor, the uh, 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 the chief and, 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 and the high ranking doctors, they all have long coats on. It, it symbolizes that they are full doctors with all rights and privileges. But however, the med students, on the other hand, they all wear short coats. They don't have everything the doctor has. So therefore, uh, uh, you can tell a person's authority by the length of their coat. The Bible says that Joseph's coat had many colors and it was long. It was a nice coat. And Joseph has this particular coat. Tradition says that the coat was supposed to go to the eldest son. But because Joseph found favor with Jacob, instead of giving it to the oldest son, the father gave the coat to Joseph. Now, listen, I this got nothing to do with Joseph. They're hating on Joseph because of the father's decision. But what you have to understand, beloved, nowhere in the text you find Joseph asking God to be the dreamer. Nowhere in the text you found Joseph asking uh, his father for a coat, but they just gave it to him. Some of the things uh, you have right now, you didn't qualify for it. You don't have the credit for it. You don't have the money for it. You didn't even have the right connections to get it. But look at someone in your house, type it in the chat, put it on Facebook. It says, I have favor with God. Uh, I have favor 
with God. I have favor with God. Let me park here for the second time in this little uh, conversation that we're having and tell you that it's a part of the plan to be stripped. The Bible says his brother stripped him of his coat. They stripped Joseph of his coat of many colors and they threw him into a pit. Now, now before I go further, let me explain about this pit. Pits are usually have a lot of rubbish and garbage and the pits has water flowing through it. So if you throw someone in the pit, usually they will drown, they will be hurt, they will end up dying. But the Bible says, this in the text, that the pit was empty, verse 24, and they took him and cast him into a pit and the pit was empty, there was no water in it. God has a way of taking you from one place and putting you even in a situation that you find that's not good. You don't like the accommodations. You don't like what it is, but still keeping you covered even in your pit experience. God, the Bible says that they took the coat. And, 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 but I have to let you know that this was important because he could not go where he was going wearing his father's coat because he, he God had another coat waiting for him in Pharaoh's closet. Uh, sometimes what you hold so near and dear, I know it has sentimental value to it, but, but, but what God is shifting you, you can't go with certain things. The coat that his father gave him was a sign of his appointment. Uh -huh. But the coat that God was giving him was a sign of his anointing. Uh, you can't take uh, uh, my appointment. You can take my appointment away, but you can't take my anointing away. Uh -huh. Some of you have been appointed to some things and it can be shifted and moved and you can lose your appointment, but you can't lose your anointing. Let me put it like this. I was uh, uh, appointed the youth minister of Mount Sinai Baptist Church many years ago, but I'm anointed to be pastor of the remnant. Uh -huh. yeah, you have to understand that God is anointing you for a season and for a reason. And sometimes you have to leave your appointment to do your assignment. The reason why God is trying to strip you is so that he can make room for what he has coming for you. There is greater coming. We make this declaration every time we meet, every uh, a conversation we have is that we are expecting greater, but you can't expect to get greater holding on to what you had in the past. Yes, I know you're comfortable there. It looks nice and you, you worked hard at it. I, I understand that, but God is shifting you. And sometimes you have to go through a pit experience. You may be in a place that you find uncomfortable. You really don't want to be there, but God is taking you there for a reason. Who am I talking to on this uh, uh, Zoom and Facebook on this morning that you are going do a pit stop so that God can do what he has to do and bless you and blow your mind. God is stripping you. And if you uh, 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 wait to move out the old while bringing in the beginning, you will get caught up in a traffic jam. Uh -huh. You ever you ever got new furniture at home and and what they tell you before uh, uh, Raymond Flanagan or whosoever will get there to deliver the furniture, they tell you, make sure you disassemble and break down everything and, and the room is clear so they come, they can bring the stuff right in. You can't be taking out your old living room set as they come again with the new living room set because it'll be a traffic jam. You have to strip off some things. God is stripping you to make room for what God has for you. There is a blessing with your name on it. Can I tell you, can I prophesy this to you on this morning that your miracle is on the way, your healing is on the way, your breakthrough is on the way, your house, your apartment is on the way, your deliverance is on the way, your dreams are about to come to pass. Lay hands on yourself and say, I have favor with God so I know it's on the way. I gotta go now, y'all, but 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 don't don't fight over something that's temporary when God has something permanent on the way. Nowhere in the text you see Joseph fighting 
for this coat. Nowhere in the text, you see Joseph is fighting his brothers. Sometimes in your life, you need to just let go and let God. Let me give you a Bible. Let me give you a Bible. There was, they, they were in the wilderness for 40 years. And every morning, God blessed them with manna to eat. And, and, and But Joshua said that the first night they spent in the promised land, God did not send manna from heaven. They were confused. The reason why God didn't send the manna is from heaven is because they didn't need a wilderness blessing. They walked up on the promised land. Why do you need manna if you're in a land flowing with milk and honey? Beloved, you can't expect God to bless you in your new uh, uh, if you are still exper expecting the blessings from your past. You have to understand that when God transitions you to your promised land, when he takes you out of wilderness, when he takes you out of bondage, and he sets you free in your new, you can't expect him to bless you the way he blessed you on yesterday. Why? Because yesterday's blessings won't suffice in today's reality. Let me help somebody. Uh-huh, yeah, the Lord has blessed you to keep your apartment. Yes, he has blessed you to give you the job, but now he's elevated you to a house. The same blessings he blessed you with for your apartment won't work for the house. Why? Because now you have more responsibilities. Uh-huh, before your refrigerator broke, you called your landlord. Your house, your refrigerator broke, who you call? You got to call Sears. You got to call uh, uh, PC Riches. You got to pay for it yourself. So the blessings that come with your house isn't the same blessing that's going to come with your apartment. Why? Because the blessing just won't fit. Not only is a part of the plan to be stripped, but it's the part of the plan to be shoved. The Bible says that he was pushed. He was thrown into, he, into the pit. If truth be told, some places you have to go. Uh, uh, you won't always go there on your own, so you have to be forced to go. Uh huh. Uh huh. You ever heard my grandmother testimony? She she was forced into this thing. You, sometimes you're going to be forced, and and you got to go by any means necessary. That you're going to be forced to do things that you don't want to do. That God has a way of getting you to do some things that He has to do it by force to save your life. He will force it on you to keep your life. He will force it on you to keep you in his will. He will force it. I know he gives you uh, options, but listen, it's either option A or option B. And when I see all the hell that come with option B, I'm forced to choose option A. Can I park here for the third time in this conversation to tell you that there are people in your past that you need to tell, thank you for shoving you. There's some people in your past that, that you have to say, thank you for pushing me because it's because they pushed you into that pit that in that pit was preserving. It's that pit experience that saved your life. It's that eviction notice that got you to get to your neck. It's that losing your job that got you to get the career. You have to understand that some Sometimes they push you and that push is what you need to get in the pit so that God can preserve you, that God can do what he needs to do. It's that shove that brought you to where you need to go. I know it was hurtful. I know it was painful. I know that, that it caused some things to happen in your life. It was traumatic. I understand all that, but you are now in a great position so that God can bless you. You have to uh, understand that sometimes that push is just what you need. I get excited here that uh, 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 you shoved me. You thought that you was going to hurt me, but you put me in place that now you no longer have access to me. Uh, you can't touch me. You can't hurt me. I'm hidden. Uh, Bruce Parham said, Lord, hide me, but I'm in a great position to get blessings from the Lord. If you keep watching long enough, they will turn into your witnesses and they will testify of where God has brought you from. That same one that pushed you is the next one that can tell you, that tell the folk that God has brought them from a mighty long way. The Bible says the pit was dry and empty. Find someone and let them know that I may be in the pit. But it really isn't that bad. I, I may be down right now. I know I cried on last night. My, my pillow is still wet with tears. I, I understand that. But I, I want you to know it really ain't that bad. I may not be where I want to be right now. But it, it really ain't that bad. I still got blessing. I'm still eating uh, three course meals a day. I'm still doing what I have to do. It, it, it really isn't that bad in this pit. 
Look at the text uh, 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 where you don't see that they dug the pit. You don't see the person the pit, but the pit was already there. The pit was already prepared. Because I tell you the fact that sometimes that your pit is already there. It was prepared for you so that it can prepare you for what God is taking you. You have to be prepared for the next season in your life. Because the pit was prepared. When you get there, pit, aren't you happy? I don't look like what I've been through all that bad, even though the not permanent. The, I need to go. Because it is in the, uh, yeah, 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 see, that's how on the track. And every so often, but expect greater because God is shifting you. When your money is funny, your change is strange, simply expect greater. God has a shift in store for you. You're going from a job to a career. You need all you to get out of it. Yeah. You squeeze tight and you stuck in, in the city.